begin. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you have some of the sources in front of you. Um, but the um, this week's parsha in Eretz Yisrael is Parsha's Korach, and we're going to talk a little bit about what Korach uh, what Korach's argument was, and uh, hopefully learn a little bit about uh, a generally uh, important topic in our lives. So we know the Medrash tells us Rashi quotes part of it. Korach used the following logical argument against Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Compare what, where does Chazal get this from? The end of Parsha Shlach is Tzitzis, in the beginning of Korach. So something to do with Tzitzis and and uh, Korach. The Kafatz Korach from Moshe. Korach says, Talus shekula treles. Mao should they determine Tzitzis? If you have a talus, that is all treles. It's all that die. The need Tzitzis. Remember Moshe, you taught the Gemara Menachos. Right, Chelas Domal Yam, Domal Rakia, Domal Kisya Kavid. So this is great. A whole baghead is Chelas. You have to put on one string or two strings or four strings. Amar Lechayev is Pitzitzis. Yes, you do, says Moshe. Amar Lech says Korach. That doesn't make any sense. Korach should call Amar Lech Korach. Talus should call it Chelas. In Pateras Atzma, Arbar Chud Pateras Osa. Understand? If you have a whole baghead, it's not good enough. One string is good enough. Two strings are good enough. Doesn't make sense. And he was mis and he was uh he made fun of Moshe. He scoffed. Or Ayas Mali Svarim, or the other Medrash. The other example given. A house that's full of books. Full of Sifri Koda, not books, Sifri Kodesh. Moshe Padman you have a room full of Sifri Torah. I remember there was uh, I once saw this, I was thinking of this Medrash. Um after one of the wars in Gaza, I don't remember where, whether I think when well, they went in on, on foot and they lost, I think, 70 soldiers, something like that. So they donated 70 Torahs to the Kotel. I remember I saw this thing that they showed that the night before they were going to give the 70 Torahs to the Kotel, they showed all the new Sifri Torah. So you saw like Torahs and Torahs and Torahs, all of these. I'm like, Mom, it's the Torah story, right? You have a room full of Sifri Torah. You have to put a mezuzah on that door? It's not a shul, not a shul. A shul take it exactly as it need. But we have a room full of Sifrei Torah. So Amar He says, yes. He says, yes? The whole room is full of Sifrei Torah. That doesn't guard it. All the Torah kula, Rish Ayin Hei Parshia. Zayin Pateris is a bias. Parsha Achad Ruzuf Pateris is a bias. Amar Lo Dvar Me'i Lulun Tzavis Aleim. You're making it up, Moshe. It doesn't make sense. We live chatah bodan. Right, it doesn't make sense. Say that's what you're, that's what you're doing. And that's what your that's what the Hakadosh Baruch wants. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. The question is, why did Korach have to pick those elements, these images? Why did Afka these images about Cheles or Mezuzah? Is there something specific about these imageries that that should help us understand what he was going against? Number one. Number two. When they first come to Moshe and Aaron, in source number two, they give them Rav Lachem, Kol Eida Kulam Kedoshim, Zacham Hashem, Umatua Tisnasu Akal Hashem. Why do you raise yourself up? What's Moshe's reaction? He's never reacted this way before. By Yishma Moshe, by Yipal Apana, falls down, falls down on his face, as if this one is beyond. I can't deal with this. And then he gets up and asks to punish them. What is it about Korach's complaint that was so dangerous that Moshe said, I can't believe it? That Moshe didn't want to hear of it. If you look at the Arachayim HaKadosh, the Arachayim says, the Pasuk Gimel says that they gathered against Moshe and Aaron and they said to them, and then Vayishma Moshe v'yipal apana. The Arachayim just asks, why do you even have to say the words Vayishma Moshe? Moshe heard. They were talking to Moshe. Obviously Moshe heard. Yishma Moshe be Paul Pana, but it says Moshe heard. Our Chaim says, no, no, he didn't just hear, he understood. He understood where they were coming from and what they were doing, what their real complaint was, and that's why be Paul Pana. Nira, he would such a melaglagim, Bogomruk Zerat Samachuvan, Salasadvarim. They didn't explicitly say their whole claim, Udia Pasa, the Pasik says, the haven Moshe Tachlitz Advar. Moshe understood them. Always behind. <laughs> so, number one, why Daphne Titzes and Mezuzah? Number two, what exactly 
was, was so bad about it that, that Moshe couldn't even handle it. And he says to Korah, he says, and what's the next passage? He says, don't accept their carbonos. Moshe's, Moshe's, I don't know if he's nervous, but he's very strong. He's very strong. By the Meraglim, Hashem, please forgive them. By the Misonim, please forgive them. Egel, please forgive them. Here, Korah, boom. Boom. Can't go on. Moshe says, Bria, swallow them up. What exactly is going on here? Says the Gur Arye. Says the Maharal. Says the Maharal. But on the surface, it seems like it was just a problem with the Kahuna. The problem, he wanted to be the Kohen God's whole. He wanted this, he wanted that. Says the Gur Arye. You know what Korach was against? He was against the concept of having a Rebbe. He was against the concept of having one that could be mashpia on the whole rest. One string, one little cloth, mashpia on the whole thing. That's why those two dafka are mentioned. Those are two chefzah shal mitzvos where you have one part of it that affects a whole rest. Mezuzah affects the whole room, the whole room in Shamor. Tzitz is one little tcheles or two or four, whatever your shita is, a minority could affect the whole group. And that's why he picked that. The Nira Lomar says the Maharal. It was a specific reason why he took these. They were both leaders. One of them is focused on the Maisim, on the Maisa Mitzvahs. Kohen Gadol, he does the Avodah, he gets Kapara for Kalal Yisrael. Yasher Maasem Shal Yisrael. Avodah HaMaisa, Yem HaKarbanos. Moshe Rabbeinu, Hu Aya Shomem Yagodesh Baruch Hu HaTorah HaMitzvahs. One was Maisim, one was Torah and learning. Umalamid Osam Yisrael. Sof, Sof, Aaron, Mamuna, Ikara, Lamaiso, Moshe, Latalmud. These were the two leaders. And Korach's bringing the Raya from one and from the other. You don't need them. It doesn't make sense. Korach maybe is a Raya. Shane Srikhan, Lishnei, and Loba, Maiso, Loba, Talmud. And that's why he brought two. Maybe Raya, and Talish, and Chulat, Chelas. What does a Talish symbolize? A mitzvah that you do. You do a mitzvah. A leader, a leader in Maisa Mitzvos, to Mamuna La Maisa. Rafisha Mitzvah, Sitzes Gamke, Nitna Lakayim, Kalam Mitzvah, Kodesh Baruch Hu. Right, the Sitzes, we spoke about this last week. Where Yisam Oso, who's a chartem, it's called Mitzvos Hashem. That's Yisam Oso. Korach says, to do all the Mitzvos, you need one reminder. Everybody's Kadosh. The whole Beket can be Treles. Heine Tzricha Chut Acher. No, we don't need anybody else. That's in terms of Maisim. And Moshe, Mezuzah, Torah, Klaf. No, we can all learn Torah. We're all good. That's why it's the marshal of the Bais Mali Svarim. Everybody's a safer Torah. Every single Jew is a walking safer Torah, says Korach. You need a leader, you need somebody beyond this. We don't need any intermediary. In a bottom line, in a strikeham shumem sa'i, to kulam achamim, shamu bipiagura. Korach was against leadership. Korach was against the concept of Mesorah. Korach was against the Rebbe Talmud relationship. Rev Salvechik has, um, in Reflections of the Rub, if you ever want, those are very, I don't know, people haven't been uh, read so many of Rev Salvechik's works, the Reflections of the Rub in English, those two. Are, uh, are, are, you know, they were written, they were summarized, summaries of his uh, drushes that he gave at the conventions in June time. And if you never read them, you go through that. So a lot of them are about these parashiyos, shlach, Torah, chukas, because the conventions were always in June. So there, he talks about the common sense rebellion against Torah authority. And there, I just gave you one little paragraph of Torah 7 6. And he never bothered Salel because he knew that. Need to go to architecture school in order to, you know, to build a Mishkan. Medicine, science. But in Torah, he says, you don't need a Rebbe. I'm good. 
Moshe sees this attitude and says, this can't go on. Am Yisrael cannot exist like this without the Rebbe Talmud transmission. And that's why he's like, Yipal And that's why he feels that, you know, it can't exist. Everything else falls apart if we don't have this. Rambam, we pointed this out in the past. Rambam is like, Rambam to Mishnah Torah. Three pages, short Hakdama. What is he going to talk about? What's he going to talk about in his little introduction to Mishnah Torah? Not the other major Hakdamas that we, Shmona Prakim and uh, Krishna Mishnayis. There's three pages in front of in the beginning of Mishnah Torah. So it's not like introductions that we have nowadays where you thank the publisher and you thank your wife and kids. And, uh, you know, the Ram is not doing that. Uh, Ram talks about one topic, Misora. Misora of Torah from Moshe, Har Sinai, the Moshe, Yoshua, Kulu. I gave you four lines of it, but that's the whole topic of the whole introduction. Why does Raman talk about that after there? Because that's a prerequisite. Mishnah Torah is the Torah. Before that, you have to know. Torah, a life of Torah, a nation of Torah is built on Rebbeim and Talmidim. We then turn into Rebbeim and their Talmidim, Bechulu, Bechulu. Korach rejected that. Korach said everybody can be for themselves. Korach said, Kol Eila Kulam Kedoshim. It was kofar in this tenet. The Rambam says in Ilchus Tshuva, there are three. Rambam talks about halachically, what is an apikaris, what is a min, what is a kofar, all different types of heretics. So the Rambam there says there are three people who are called a kofar batora, a denier of Torah. Ha'omer ein Torah me'im Hashem. Number one, if I say any part of Torah did not come from Hashem. A human being wrote some part of Torah. It's a kofar in Torah. Even one letter, one word. That's a kofar by Torah, number one. Number two, kofar by Pirusha. A kofar, I deny the explanation that's given. I contradict and undermine those that teach me the Torah. You don't talk to go by to us. That's number two. Also, Kofar Torah, the city and the explanation that has been given to us, we deny the transmission of Torah. So that's a Kofar, says the Rambam. And that's what Korach did. And Moshe saw and realized that Israel cannot continue like this for future generations without a Rebbe Talmud relationship. Even, Rabbi Lau points out in his commentary on Perki Avos, even. David HaMelech, who was no slouch, to put it mildly. David HaMelech knew everything. And yet, uh, you have learned uh, Masechah's brachas, what is it, the first parak and brachas, when he was involved in everything, he always asked his Rebbe. Who is his Rebbe? Pibosheth. Who is Pibosheth? His nephew. Son of, of Yonatan. It wasn't, too, it wasn't beneath the covet of David HaMelech. I always say I have a Rebbe. I always say I'm connected. So the question is, what is it about the Rebbe Talmud relationship that allows Am Yisrael to be built on this relationship and that Moshe Rabbeinu was so, so strong about and Korach wanted to reject? So let's talk about it from the Talmud's perspective and from the Rebbe's perspective. Talmud's perspective. So first, Misha tells us, Berk Yavos already, Yeshua ben Prach Yomer, Asei l'cha rav. Asei. Asei isn't just like find. Make. It takes effort. Asei l'cha rav. What's so crucial though? What if I am a great, very smart Talmud Chacham, and I can just learn everything myself? What's... What do I need a Rebbe so badly for? Again, a lot of what we're going to say is obvious, but it's good to review. Number one, Torah information. 
there's always more to learn. Right, we think we know a lot, we think we have researched it well, but there's always more. There's always more to learn. We think we know this far as there's always another perspective. Remember when I was in um, when I was in Yeshiva, there was a Rebbe that used to not sleep so much. He was a um, he um, used to sleep. He used to stay up all night learning most of the nights, and then he used to sleep from like after Vasikin until morning seder. I don't know, like a couple hours. That's all he did. I remember he once said that um, he would spend a week or so on a sugya, and then he would open up a dippers and he would open up a dippers Moshe. He would open up, open up a dippers Moshe. I've only opened it up once or twice. Not the Igris Moshe, but the Dibbers Moshe. The Dibbers Moshe is Ramosha Feinstein on those were his shiurim that he used to give in Yeshiva. They're very, very long. They're Anaf Lamid days, or he says, I, I thought I had a handle on the sugya, and then I would like open it up and then realize like still a lot more to go. Number one, a Rebbe is needed because there's always gonna be more. Again, it goes back to Moshe Rabbeinu. Every Rebbe needs a Rebbe. Number one, maybe even more important, is the second element. And that's the Gemara and Brachas on Avzayin. And again, greater, and again, this doesn't mean a specific Rebbe in Yeshiva, which it can mean, but it means people who we look up to throughout our lives, to be able to connect to, to learn from. Rabbis, rabbis, rabbi, whoever it is. Dola shimusha shal Torah yosem limuta. Greater is the service of Torah more than learning. Shenemar. What does that mean? It's better to service a rabbi than just to learn from a rabbi. As you see, the Gemara says, the Pasuk says that Elisha, the great one of the greatest Nabiim of all time, Elisha ben Shaphat poured water for Elio, his rabbi. It doesn't say that he learned from Elio. It said he poured water for him. Because service, meaning outside of the classroom. Why is that so important? Being out with a Rebbe. Boring, being with a Rebbe outside the classroom? So Salvatic said it's the Gemara in Brachas Dachem Zayin. Source number 12. The Gemara there talks about, in the days of old, one wasn't allowed a bench, with an, have a Zimun with an Am Haaretz. A Halachic Am Haaretz. Who is an Am Haaretz? Halachically, says the Gemara. A few opinions. These are Amaritz. All Sheino Kori Kriyashma Shachrits Harvest. Somebody who does not say Kriyashma on purpose refuses to be Makabo Machashamayim. Okay. Give him a Zami with him. If you're Shua Omer, which you're going to be a fillin. Fillin's not for me. And as I Omer, all Sheino Titus with Big Doe. Rabbi Nasan Omer. In Mezuzah Pisco. Rabbi Nasan, Kachi Shal Bun. No mezuzah, no tzitzes, no tefillin. You don't send your kids to yeshiva. Give them a Jewish education. All very understandable. Last opinion. Even if somebody knows a ton and learns all day, but he doesn't have a rebbe, hareza am haaret. Because a rebbe doesn't just teach Torah. Rebbe teaches life, and Rebbe teaches how Torah applies to all situations in life. And that's Gedola Shimusha Yosem Limuta. The Talmud needs from a Rebbe to realize how a how the Torah is supposed to be applied and the principles of Torah. And Korach rejected all of this. You don't need it. You don't need to learn from a Rebbe Torah information. You don't even to be near a Rebbe. You can do it yourself. Moshe Rabbeinu knew the dangers of not having this. And that's why he stood up. That's why he stood up. That's me sad the Talmud. A little bit. Again, we can speak more. But that's me sad the Talmud. Then there's the idea of sad the Rebbe as well. From Moshe Rabbeinu's perspective why he felt so strongly in this regard. A Rebbe needs Talmidim, Moshe Rabbeinu felt. He needed Am Yisrael to be his Talmidim. And Korach was endangering that whole setup. Why does a Rebbe need Talmidim? 
Why does Rebbe need to tell me that? So on the most basic level, he makes him a better Rebbe if he has Talmudim. How is that? We've mentioned, and we mentioned a couple weeks ago in Cheer, there's no Pasuk in the Torah that says, learn Torah. The mitzvah of Talmud Torah is formulated as teaching Torah. And the Rambam, when he quotes the mitzvah of learning Torah, he says in Source 14, Lomo Torah Ulalamda, learning and teaching. Why? On the most basic level, when you teach Torah, you learn better. And when you have to teach Torah, you prepare it better. If anybody has ever had to give a chabura, you know that very well. You lie, I remember your chabura you showed me. Right? You know that very well. If you ever have to teach anything, because you're connected to that. And that's the deeper idea, I think, of the Gemara in Machis and in Tainus, Source 15. The Buddha Nasi says, <laughs> I learned a lot of Torah from my Rebbeim. I learned the most from my students. What does that mean? So, A, it could be literally, the student has a good kasha, and you learn from the students. But it's even before the student does it. If I know I'm going to have students, I need to prepare better. If I know my students are, are sharp and on the ball, I better have my, I learn better. So on the lowest level, a Rebbe needs to meet them to make, it, to make them learn better. Selfish, personal. But it's much deeper than that. Much deeper than that. The Gemara tells us in Meseches Sanhedrin, Torah 16, Rabbi Yonasan says, if somebody teaches Torah to a child, it's Ki'ilu, they're his father. Kilo, they gave birth to the child. Shenemar, as the Pasuk says, Velo told us Aaron and Moshe. It says, Aaron. It says, these are the told us Aaron and Moshe, and they will only list Aaron's family. What do you mean, Moshe's told us? Aaron, y'all had a Moshe Lime, the figure of Nikra al Shmo. Teaching Torah is giving life, as if the students are the children. Because imbuing life into a child or into a Talmud to a young man. He's giving them life. Mari says in Nida that we know, I didn't give it to you, that the three partners in every child, mother, father, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Some suggest that a Rebbe is the Shliach of HaKadosh Baruch Hu throughout life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives the senses and the spirit and the, and the neshama. Who nourishes the neshama? Who gives the food? Biological father and mother give the physical food, but the Rebbe gives the spiritual food for the neshama. So a Rebbe is giving life to the child. And a parent, there's no greater need and rut zone that a parent wants to do than to give life to the children. And there's no greater rut zone that a Rebbe wants to do than to give life to the children. Right? There's a famous Rambam. The Rambam says, Nilchus Roteach. Allah is based on Gemara and Makos that when a student had to go to Ari Miklat, his Rebbe had to go with him. His Rebbe had to go with him. Why? Says the Rambam in Torah 17. But it says he has to live in the ear of Miklat. You call that living if your Rebbe's not there? Says the Rambam. Aselo Kedesha Yichya, Chaye Bale Chachma Umevaksheha. Hello, Talmud, the Misa Chashuvin. Rabbi Chaim has a whole sicha about this one line. Bale Chachma Umevaksha, the life of Bale Chachma and those who seek it without Talmud, the Misa Chashuvin. So a Rebbe is life. There's a beautiful uh, piece in the Machna. Machna is the Hafla, the uh, of the Rebbeim of the Hassam Sofer. He writes on the Gemara in Chagiga, from the page that says in Chagiga Tezvav, Am Rabbi Yochanan, Torah Yivakshem Ipiu Kimalach Hashem Tzavakosu. The Pazik says, uh, seek Torah from his mouth, because he is an angel of God. If he's a Malach, then you could, you could ask Torah from him, and if not, not. So the Pashtus of that line, of that Pasuk, and that Chazal, is that the Rebbe has to be uh, 
upstanding individual and, and have proper behavior. And he has to be a malach in your eyes. You know, it's from the perspective of the student. If the Rebbe is like a malach to you, then learn Torah from him. But if not, maybe he's not the best person to learn Torah from. But the Machna turns it on turns it on his head. This is something that the Re- for the Rebbe, not for the Talmud. We know, for many of you have heard this before, a malach in Tanakh is called an omade. And a person is called a mahalich. Malachim don't move. They're born, created on one level. That's it. That's their level. There's a pasuk in Zechariah. That Zechariah is told, I'm going to make you a mahalich in omdim ma'ela. You're going to go. Because man always goes up. Man is going up and up and up. Malachim are omid. Says the makna. Says the makna. The makna is the commentary on uh, Mitzvah's Kedushin. The flaw is on Ksubis and the Makna is on Kedushin. He says, when a Rebbe is teaching Torah, his whole perspective has to be raising up the Talmud, not focusing on their own personal. That might come. Tell me they owe me Kulam. They have to be like a Malach. They like a Malach. A Malach is an Omid. He's not a Mahalach. The Kavan is a Biochanan. The Arab, the Shash, the Malami, the Talmidah. That's in Kol Magamas Panov. Lalo says Talmidah. Lift up his students who has Biram upon him Yafas. Lo Yaksha Bosa Shot to Ellis Elias Haswo. Not to think of himself. It's our Akhlius Bosa Shot to Malachanikra Ome. Lo Yaksha Varav keeps saying he's like Hachmas or Alzer. Also, I can learn myself. I can do getting more done. No. It's like a Malach. You're not going anywhere. Up, down. That's what a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants. Right? That was Rabbi Preda in Mesech Azerevin. About 400 times. It's a need. It's a need that Moshe Rabbeinu had, that every Rebbe has. The beautiful marshal given in Mitzvahs Psachim about a Rebbe trying to give Torah over. There was a discussion between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Achai. Teach me Torah. No, I can't teach you Torah. It's dangerous. Listen. Omar lo b'ni. Yotzi Masha Egel wrote to Lina. Tara wrote to More than the calf wants to suckle, the cow wants to give over the milk. I, I, I can't not give it. Sometimes when a woman has a lot of milk after she has a baby, she needs to express the milk even more than the baby wants the milk. And it's painful not to. A Rebbe, with a proper perspective, has to have the attitude of, I, I can't hold it in. I can't not. I have to pass it over. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu felt. He needed to pass it over. He needed to be Rabbeinu. And Korach was undermining that. The relationship between a Rebbe and a Talmud. There's even a fascinating thought. <laughs> I don't know if I ever gave this year to you guys uh, about the last eight psukim in the Torah. The big topic, Mara Bar Basra, right? You had it this year, Tesvav. The Gemara is a machlok. It's who wrote the last eight psukim in the Torah? Moshe Rabbeinu or Yeshua Benu? Who wrote it? So, Says the Gemara, at least according to one opinion, Moshe wrote even the last eight took him in the Torah. I how did he write it? It says Moshe died. Yamas Moshe Ebed Hashem. No different shatim. The Gemara says he wrote it. Dema. He wrote it when he was crying. Why was Moshe crying when he wrote it? Was he sad that he was going to die? He couldn't have said, the Mepharshim say, that he died by Yom HaShem Moshe. He didn't die yet. So he wrote it, but was he scared? Rashi says there, be roved sorrow. I don't remember if that's Rashi in Babasra Tezvav or Menachas, Aflamin, two places. I don't remember. Rashi, one of those two places says, be roved sorrow, he's in pain. Why was Rahi in pain? Moshe Rabbeinu. He was in pain, he was nervous to die. Maybe there's something deeper. Maybe there's something deep. When the Rambam quotes this. Lacha, he explains. Oh, it's really the Gemara. The Gemara says, "I." How is he able to write it? So the Gemara says, "Oh, the Ishtani, Ishtani." There's something different about these last eight so The Rambam says they didn't have full kedushas Torah yet because they didn't happen yet. It wasn't true yet until Moshe died and the words came true. Remember, it's in past tense. It's not like the Torah says, in the future, this is going to happen. That's fine. It's true right now that in the future is going to happen. 
when Moshe wrote and Moshe died. The Rambam says, Olu Mashmashim Akram, he says, Moshe are in Ishtanu. Doesn't have full Kedusha Sav. Until Yeshua bin Nun came, and that's why the Rambam holds you don't need a minion. When you read those last tapes of him, says Rab Salvechik, you know why Moshe Rabbeinu was crying? Not because he was nervous that he was going to die, he was scared. He couldn't teach his last eight sukkim of the Torah to Am Yisrael. It pained him. There was a section of Torah that he couldn't transmit, that he couldn't give over, because obviously it wasn't true yet. Says the Rav in Torah 23. They didn't have the status of Kedusha. He couldn't imbue it with Kedusha, meaning he couldn't transmit it to them in the full glory of what Torah is. And that's what pained them. Because Moshe had a need, like every Rebbe needs to have a need to give over Torah. Because that's how Torah is transmitted from generation to generation. It's beside the Talmud, the information, and the Dor Shimushi Yosem Limuda. It's Misad the Rebbe. And maybe the Medrash Shmuel says, maybe that's even alluded to in Asayel Harav. What does Asayel Harav mean? Ashtus, speaking to the student, make for yourself a Rav, make for yourself a Rebbe. Some of the, the first in the Medrash Shmuel, there's a collection on Pirkei Avos, make yourself a Rav. Asayel Harav. If you could do it, make yourself a Rav. You need to transmit. You're a Talmud, you're also a Rebbe. So Asela Harav is both get a Rebbe, or be a Rebbe. Both of those in that statement. And this is all, these are the building blocks of transmission of Torah from the Rebbe's perspective, from the Talmud's perspective. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu, by Yitzhak Torah wanted to reject it all. I can make my own decisions. I can learn as much Torah as I want and not learn as much Torah. And I can know how to apply Torah. Moshe saw the danger in that. There are other sins. The Miraglim, yeah, they sinned. It was terrible. And the Ego was terrible. But somehow Moshe knew that those they can get beyond, the tshuva, this sin of Korach, Moshe says, forget it. You gotta get rid of them. This attitude. He's not going to let Torah thrive. And that's why he was so harif in his petitioning HaKadosh Baruch Hu to put a, radical end, to put, a, put a radical end to it. The Rebbe Talmud relationship is the basis, really, of, of Torah transmission, the basis of our religion. And that relationship is something, and this will finish, that the Rambam uses as the highest level of relationship. I mentioned this in other, they speak about love from a Jewish perspective earlier in this year, one of the Wednesday nights. I think I, I, think I quoted this Rambam then. The Rambam says there are three types of friends on the Mishnah. The Rambam says there are three types of friends. Number one, Hever Toelis. What does that mean? I get something out of the relationship, a business partner. A king and his soldiers. Two partners in business is a mutual relationship. Fine. And you have the next level up. Chever anachas. What does that mean? A good friend, more than a business partner. You trust them, you share, you like spending time with them. You do all you do for things with them. You tell them their secrets. Yigalo kol yanov. You're comfortable with them, a best friend. And finally, the third level up. Not just a business partner, not just a best friend, but two people have a common goal. And it's that goal that binds them together. I get that marriage could be all three. But you need this one too. The taiva and the kavana of both of them are towards one goal. Yatov, the yirtza kolecha leazer bechaveru, and they each want to help each other get to that goal. Zeu achaver shetziva lagnoso, and that's the ultimate chaver they have to try to get. The who? What the Rambam says, the last line, and this is what this is the relationship between Rav le Talmud le Talmud le Rav, 
And he says both directions. He says both directions. Because the Rebbe needs the Talmud and the Talmud needs the Rav. And that's the highest level when they're connecting who HaKadosh Baruch Hu, through his Torah, trying to understand the Dvar Hashem. Because that's the highest level of relationship that one could have. And Baruch Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu, in this week's parsha, he preserved those relationships. Korach wanted to reject it. But he was strong, and he stood up, and he saved the Rebbe Talmud, Talmud Rebbe relationship. And that's why, throughout history, that's what we have. Baruch Hashem. Okay, we'll stop here.